Sarah stands in the hallway five feet from the north wall in front of locker number 225, which is on the north wall. She shines a laser pointer on locker number 300 on the north wall, which reflects off the locker onto the south wall of the hallway. Assume the locker, assume that each locker is one foot wide and there are no gaps in lockers. Also assume that the hallway is 20 feet wide. How far down the hallway from where Sarah is standing would the reflection of the laser pointer be on the south wall? Okay, so let's, let's, uh, let's draw a picture here. So Sarah is standing, stands in the hallway five feet from the north wall. So if this is Sarah. Uh, she's standing five feet from the north wall. This is five feet. From the north wall in front of locker 225, uh, which is on the north wall. She shines a laser pointer on locker number 300. Uh, so let's say this is locker 300. On the north wall, which reflects off the locker onto the south wall of the hallway. So I'm going to use red for laser. Uh, so she's, Sarah shines a laser at this locker. It's reflected onto the south side. So somewhere over here. I'll call this point R. Assume that each locker is one foot wide and there are no gaps in lockers. So if each locker is one foot wide, we can figure out this distance between number 225 and number 300 assuming that uh, lockers are uh, numbered in order, which is probably a good assumption. Also assume that the hallway is 20 feet, 20 feet wide. So we know that the distance from here to here is 20 feet. How far down the hallway from where Sarah is standing would the reflection of the laser pointer be on the south wall? So how far does Sarah have to walk down? Basically that's the distance that we're looking for. So one important fact that we need to know to solve this problem is this idea of angle of incidence and angle of reflection. If I have a wall or a mirror or some sort of surface and something bounces off, this could be a particle of light uh, or a, wave of, uh, a light wave depending on your um, personal philosophy, uh, or if it is a, you know, a tennis ball or a hockey puck or whatever it happens to be, we call the angle at which it hits a surface the angle of incidence. Now it turns out that that angle is repeated as it bounces off. These angles are, are congruent. Now notice that these are, are different than vertical angles. Vertical angles are, are formed when you've got two straight lines. This is different than that. We have one straight line and then we have two coming off of it. But the principle here again is that the angle of incidence which is the angle at which it hits the wall is the same as the angle of uh, angle of reflection. Now hockey players or indoor soccer players might use this idea a lot. They're aiming for a goal right here. They know that they have to hit the, the angle that they hit it at the wall, the ball at the wall, is going to bounce off at the same angle. Same with pool, same as air hockey, um, you know, same as basketball when someone's passing a, a ball, the same principle is held true. Now clearly there's some variation for gravity and air resistance and spin of the ball and a variety of things, but uh, considering that this is a laser and considering that this, this reflection should be pretty true, assuming that there's no uh, black hole in one of these lockers that might bend the light, uh, I think we're, we're pretty good to assume that this angle here is going to be the same as this angle here. The angle of incidence is going to be the same as the angle of reflection. Now whenever we're dealing with a problem like this, we have to think about how is this similar to problems that we've done in the past? You know, what does this look like? Now all the triangles that we've done in the past in this section deal with triangles. So the first question is, where are the triangles? Or are there some other fi similar figures that we can use here? One triangle is here, and I actually do know this length, from 225 to 300 it's going to be 75, 75 lockers are in between, which is 75 feet. 
Now where's my other triangle? Well, it might be worth to draw a line perpendicular to the north wall because we know this length is 20 feet because the hallway is 20 feet wide. It looks like that's the only other length we know. Now, when we measure distance between things, we measure it at perpendicular, uh, we form a perpendicular line with those. We form right angles. So when I say that Sarah is five feet from this wall, we know that that's a perpendicular distance because the perpendicular distance is the shortest distance. So there's our other triangle. We actually formed a pair of similar triangles. How do we know they're similar? Hopefully you've already thought about that. We've got one pair of angles here, another pair of angles here. So by angle-angle similarity, we know that those two triangles are similar. Now again, the big idea why these angles are, are, are congruent is because the angle of incidence is congruent to the angle of reflection. If we want to know how far down the hall was that projection, really we need to know this, this whole distance. We know part of it's 75. We don't know this part. Let's call it x. If we can figure out the distance from uh, locker 225 to all the way down to wherever, down the hallway to wherever the reflection happens on the south wall, we know how far down the hallway this reflection is. So really what we're looking for is x. These are similar triangles. If triangles are similar, the ratio between corresponding parts is equal. So we know the ratio of 75 to x has to be the same as 5 to 20. So 75 is to x as 5 is to 20. Using the means extremes product theorem, We know that 5 times x, which is 5x, equals 75 times 20, which is 1,500. Solving for x, we divide each side by 5, and x equals 300. So this distance from the reflection on locker 300 to the part of the hallway where the reflection um, happens on the south side is 300 feet. Now this distance from where Sarah's standing to where she, ref she pointed the laser at locker 300 is still another 75 feet. So if we take 300 and add it to 75, the distance from where Sarah is to down the hallway where the reflection is is a total of 375 feet. Now keep in mind, this is just the distance down the hallway. If we actually wanted to figure out how far Sarah was from the reflection, that would be a different distance. Now that is a distance that we would be able to solve for using mathematics. We just don't have the tool, the appropriate tool at this point. But all we're asking really for is how far down the hallway from where Sarah is standing is the reflection. That's this distance from here. It's basically the sum of these two legs of this triangle, 375 feet.